Greetings everybody, I am the Starving Martian and this is Mars Attacks issue number three from Topps Comics. This particular issue is entitled Martian Maneaters. It is the third part of the Counter-Strike storyline and it's finger licking fun. So yeah, got us some uh, Kentucky Fried Alien going on here and doesn't that look yummy. Juicy, if nothing else. So, um... Anywho, as that uh, crime-fighting dog would say, take a bite out of crime, I guess. So, this is Mars Attacks, issue number three from Tops, And, uh, let's dive right in, because... We're just gonna go over the, um... The, the basics of, of this particular story. We're not gonna read too much of the dialogue because there's a lot of it. This particular issue is dialogue heavy. And um, and really, I'm just here to give you an overview anyway. Um, the hope, of course, is that you'll be encouraged to purchase your own copy, either in um, single issues or in the collected issue uh, edition, which would be Mars Attacks Classics Volume 2. But uh, let's dive right in now. In our last issue, there was a virus that um, the Martians were tricked into um, uploading into their computers. It got sent to computers on an, um, practically all of their ships around the Earth. And this virus is somehow corrupting different files and um, eating up programs and shutting down systems. And we find that the uh, virus has manifested itself in the form of a game. Um, a voracious circle, we're told, just consumed the small arms design file I was using. And as the um, dialogue continues, it's never specifically stated, partially because the Martians wouldn't know and partially because of copyright information, but, uh, but there's a uh, yellow circle that is eating things in this virus and you have to uh, complete a game where you bring the circle through mazes in order to prevent it from um, eating other files and um, yeah it's pretty obvious that the virus that's been uploaded into the um, Martian computer systems is a form of Pac-Man so <laughs> the unsung hero of the Mars Earth Wars Pac-Man everybody gotta love it so um, the funny part, though, is all the Martian children think it's great. <laughs> They're all playing this uh, computer virus game. Uh, the way the game seems to work is that as you progress, if you beat various levels of the game, it protects various systems. If you lose a level, the system will go down. Unfortunately, just playing the game uses up memory, and um, systems are going to go down anyway. And so the ships affected with this virus... Uh, their life support is at risk. Their navigation is at risk. They can, um, as this uh, guy here states, become extraordinarily expensive meteorites. So they're just going to plummet down out of the sky. Uh, kaboom, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. That's the end of that. And so the Martians are not happy with the situation, as you imagine. Okay, so we cut to Earth. We have, as I said, a lot of dialogue here, but it's really worth reading it because we have a um, Martian couple, and uh, aren't they adorable? This guy's going on about how he used to hate the uh, spaceships, the saucers, and he says, uh, Yet now, each night when I see one of those ships glow with the reflected light of the setting sun, I repent all those bitter thoughts and think only of their beauty. Because on one of them, I met you, Dwala, my love. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of touching. And, and it makes you realize that, good or bad, Martians are just people on another planet. And uh, so what happens to them, especially in issues like this, you know, you really do feel for them. They're not just, you know, monsters here to destroy us. They honestly see us as uh, inferior life forms. And this is what they've been taught. And so now they're here to um, to take the world from us because they have great need for it. And they don't think we're worthy or deserving of it. And they're just trying to go about their daily lives, doing what they do, when suddenly their uh, helmets get cracked. 
and they both go down and fall victim to this group of cannibals. In fact, uh, they live in a place that's actually referred to in comic as Cannibal Camp. Um, so yeah, humanity obviously has fallen on hard times and uh, the stores are not restocking their uh, meat section and so these guys have taken it upon themselves to eat their fellow man and uh, when they uh, aren't doing that, they've come to develop a taste for Martian flesh. Yum yum. Especially the brain seems to be highly praised. Um, and of course, Martians are usually depicted as being very skeletal underneath their outfits. And so, um, it makes sense the brain's the biggest, juiciest, meatiest part on the Martian. We're also briefly shown this uh, red-headed lady here. Her name is Anne. She'll be a major player in Issues to Come. And uh, we get back to Colleen McKay. If you remember from the last issue, Colleen McKay was... Um, uh, she was impregnated against her will um, uh, with a, a form of uh, artificial insemination. Um, she was pretty much just strapped to a gurney, and um, we don't see exactly what goes on, but um, she's not all that pleased right now. The Martian doesn't seem to know why she's so unhappy. After all, the procedure was a success. She's now carrying a Martian baby. I mean, what Earth woman wouldn't want to carry a Martian baby? And uh, we're told here one of the reasons why these experiments are going on. Over time, he says, the Martian female's womb atrophied. On Mars, our race possessed a symbiotic relationship with a species that carried the fetus to term. Unfortunately for them, during the migration to Earth, um, they did include sufficient numbers of these um, uh, to ensure valuable procreation. Unfortunately, the birth hosts proved too fragile for spaceflight. When we reached the moon, they all died. So, um, yeah, the Martians can't go back to Mars. They used up all the resources coming to Earth. And... Um, they brought too many of these things with them anyway. They, they pretty much decimated the population of this creature they have the symbiotic relationship with. So now they need to find another suitable host for their offspring. And uh, human beings seem to be the most logical choice. And, um, yeah, so Nurse McKay finds it hilarious that she was, as she puts it, raped by a woman. And, uh, you know, when you're in this sort of circumstance, you got to get your laps where you find them. So going back to Russia, where the Martians have their base, um, see Komodov, who is being reinstated, and so he's got some plans. Um, he's going to be taking charge of the situation with the virus, uh, kicking back to um, the uh, cannibal camp. We find that our cannibals have kidnapped um, Woody Brown and his aunt Kate. And uh, they tend to have them for dinner and a show, and then dinner the next day. And so things are not looking good for them. Oh, and here's uh, when the Martian kid's fully enjoying his game of Pac-Man. As you do, Pac-Man's is still an awesome game to this day. So there's debates at the council. Very Star Wars Episode One esque And uh, Komodoth comes up with a simple yet elegant uh, plan. Makes a message for the president. Telling him basically, okay look, you guys put a virus on our ships. Our ships are going to crash. When they do, we're going to make sure they're over the most heavily populated centers of, of human life. Any cities you have left, where wherever people are gathering, uh, that's where we're going to be crashing and burning and exploding and killing. If you'd rather not have that, then give us the code... Uh, give us, you know, what, whatever it takes to, to break this virus. And so that's his ultimatum. So getting back to uh, Nurse McKay. Um, the uh, mother of the child is here to look at um, an ultrasound. You can see a little alien baby there. And um, she's all excited about it. Oh, my baby! Look at him kick, he's so strong. And uh, 
Colleen McKay has a question. She wants to know on Mars what happened to the host after she gave birth, to which the uh, Paya Care responds, it died. So uh, things are not looking on the up and up for our friend uh, Colleen McKay. Meanwhile, at the uh, cannibal camp, we get some nice roasted Martian brain. Mm-mm, good. And then Anne comes around to uh, free Kate and Woody Brown. Uh, turns out that uh, she is Kate's older sister, making Woody her nephew. And she specifically says, Kate, I've changed. I don't like what I've become, what I've had to do to survive. And we'll find out in later issues exactly what she's had to do to survive. It's not pretty. Um, we'll also find out how she's changed and whether or not that's pretty is, uh, well, that's up to the reader. Um, but uh, they get ambushed by the uh, rest of the cannibal camp, uh, who in turn get ambushed by Martians who are taking revenge on them for, you know, killing and eating them. And so, um, Anne is able to escape along with her family. Meanwhile, we see the uh, current president of the United States. Now, if you remember in the original miniseries, the president of the United States dies in, um, in, in the uh, base gets blown up and so uh, we have a new president who is uh, President Newt Gingrich and so anyone who remembers American politics in the 90s will probably find that amusing uh, regardless of what side on the political ladder you stand on that, that that's kind of funny um, but yeah so Newt Gingrich is now the president and they're going to be testing out some um, some new anti-UFO uh, armory that they have that they've cooked up, but uh, before they get a chance, come on, Mr. Page likes to stick together. There we are. So, but before they get a chance, they get a visit from a payak delivering them uh, Komodov's ultimatum. And so, President Gingrich um, determines that that cannot pass, so he says, uh, you know, that they can't have these, these ships crashing onto cities. So he says that uh, President Gingrich wants him to hand over the virus code immediately. And so that's going to be part of the major conflict of the next issue. Where the Martians... Uh, <laughs> okay, in the next issue, the Martians attack um, Rush Limbaugh. So there's something. Uh, okay, so then if you flip... This comic over, you get a, a backup story called The Pickup. Now, we've read this before. Um, it got its own uh, episode, so go back and check that out. But uh, this was the um, uh, backup story we've already read, introducing uh, the um, Martian Spy Girl. But uh, So this one's got a brand new cover. It's a um, uh, imitation, a... Um, parody, if you will, of the uh, movie poster for, um, what was it, Showgirls, I believe. A movie which I've never seen and never intend to, but, uh, but there you go. So guys, let me know in the comments, is this more sexy or disturbing? Um, you know, that's, I guess, completely up to you. It doesn't actually do much for me, I'll be honest. It is, however, rated NR17, no reading unless you buy the comic. So, I guess I can't open this one up for you, but um, but it's it's the exact same story as was printed in here, just a reprint. And uh, yeah, so I imagine they did this because they wanted to make sure you knew this character um, of the Martian Spy Girl, because she was going to be in the Mars Attacks movie that was coming out very soon as of the publication of this issue. So guys, this has been Mars Attacks issue number three martian man eaters hope you enjoyed till next time keep watching the skies